Chris Bukowski for Emerging Civil War, and I am delighted today to be joined by Andrew Dalton, the Executive Director of the Adams County Historical Society in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. And Andrew, big day today for you today. Major announcement with some really cool research. Um, you want to tell us what you guys have going on? Sure, yeah, so uh, we have uh, discovered a, a pretty incredible new resource uh, that I think will be widely used by Civil War historians and especially historians of the Battle of Antietam. And that is a map that was created uh, likely within weeks or months of the Antietam, uh, of the fight at Antietam, uh, showing all of the burials on the battlefield, the temporary graves of Union Confederate soldiers, as well as other features like cannons and dead horses. Uh, and this is a map created by a, a map maker named Simon G. Elliott. Um, who's actually better known uh, for a map that he created of the Gettysburg battlefield uh, that was published around the same time. And the Antietam map, which we'll talk about in, in more detail in just a second, has helped shed some light on his more famous Gettysburg map, correct? Yeah, it has. So um, th this whole uh, research really began uh, when we were trying to uh, find the identity of the map maker named S.G. Elliott on this Gettysburg map. Who was he? Where did he come from? Um, and we're curious about when this map was made here at Gettysburg. It's published in 1864, but it seemed to show features on the battlefield that couldn't have lasted for more than a few weeks after the fighting had ended. For instance, there's dead horses and, you know, clumped in piles around the battlefield. And we know that the horses were burned um, and, and buried uh, within just a couple of weeks of the fighting. So we, we know that this map is very early, but you know it's always been a mystery about why the map was then published in 1864 and was Elliot here earlier. And it turns out that you know, Elliot's a, a, actually an engineer working for a California railroad project. Um, and he was in Washington, DC uh, in 1864, lobbying for the passage of a railroad bill. And at that time, he's kind of uh, taken aside by, by friends or you know goes, himself and approaches people like David Wills in Gettysburg who are actively involved with uh, moving bodies from their temporary burial places on the field to a new national cemetery. Uh, so Elliot created this map in 1864 and now from our research it seems clear that it's based on earlier surveys um, and we know that Wills had actually commissioned a survey of the field within a couple weeks of the battle. Um, so instead of being published in 1864 um, as original work, we now know that Elliot is most likely basing his Gettysburg map off of surveys that must have been uh, completed within just a couple weeks of the battle. And you've done some pretty cool detective work in finding out who Elliot was and uh, kind of have pieced together parts of an identity that, that folks had not connected to give us more of a picture of this fellow who, who you've described as a railroad swindler. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about his background? Sure, yeah. So uh, Elliot uh, was born in New Hampshire and uh, ended up following the, the gold rush to California in the late 1840s. Um, when he's there, he becomes a county surveyor um, and he works uh, on various projects related to railroads and surveying the lines for railroads. His biggest project was in, actually in 1863. At the time of the Battle of Gettysburg, uh, he was in California surveying a railroad line that was to be uh, put in between Marysville, California, Northern California, and Portland, Oregon, a large over 600 mile stretch of railroad. Um, and when he's on this um, this expedition to survey that route, he gets into a major disagreement with his partners and ends up abandoning the survey. He goes back to San Francisco, where he's kind of based out of, um, and the local newspapers report that uh, he's actually, he's uh, over, um, <laughs> overblown what the survey's results had been and actually says that the survey was completed. And he says he's willing to go to Washington to lay it before Congress and lobby for the passage of a bill. Um, so Elliot, in January of 1864, arrives on the East Coast in New York um, and uh, kind of <laughs> touting this, this project that, that he had not actually completed. Um, he ends up in Washington. Uh, he's there for uh, most of 1864. And it's during that time that he's, he's off on these, these projects that kind of have nothing at all to do with his real purpose there. Um, and he's being subsidized by this company to lobby for the bill. The bill ultimately fails. Um, in the meantime, Elliot has created these two maps. Um, and then the, the really the strangest thing about these maps is that they were not widely distributed. Uh, they weren't widely sold. They weren't widely published. Today, we only know of three or four original copies of the Elliott map and only one of the Antietam Elliott map, which is the New York Public Library. Um, so Elliott's here and then leaves back uh, for California in 1865 after getting married um, here on the East Coast. And uh, when he gets back to California, he again becomes 
wrapped up in a, a kind of an elaborate scheme uh, related to a railroad between California and Oregon um, and really misrepresents his connections in terms of backers for the project. He ends up creating a false identity for a major investor. Once this is figured out, he's basically uh, pushed out. Um, there's a major court battle in California and Oregon, and Elliot returns to the East Coast kind of uh, fading into obscurity. Uh, so it's a really interesting career that he has. Um, he's definitely a self-promoter and uh, um, uh, somebody who is very fond of uh, coming up with elaborate schemes and uh, swindling people. And uh, it's possible that these maps and the creation of these maps and him attributing his name and his uh, his work to these projects is, is, is another example of, uh, of uh, where he's misrepresenting himself. And you've mentioned that the Elliott map of Gettysburg is something that historians have known about and have used, but um, the work that he's, that you've discovered uh, on these, these maps that have been recently discovered um, have, have really shed new light on his Gettysburg work. Uh, how would you say that that has helped kind of redefine your understanding of the, uh, the Gettysburg map in particular? Sure, yeah. So there, we, once we had the Antietam map to compare to the Gettysburg map, we were able to see some of the, uh, the inconsistencies. Although the maps are almost identical, there's certain things that, that set them apart that help us understand the Gettysburg map better. Uh, one is that on the Antietam map, um, the dead horses are shown in clusters as if they had been pulled together um, and, and prepared for either uh, to be burned or to be buried. At Gettysburg, however, the horses are scattered around the battlefield, um, and it's, uh, it's apparent that uh, the survey at Gettysburg must have been done within just a couple weeks of the battle. Um, and we do know from, from looking through our resources here at the Adams County Historical Society that local citizens like David Wills uh, were actively documenting the locations of the burials within weeks of the battle. And so when Elliot arrived on the scene in 1864, he must have been copying that original survey. And this would mean that the Elliot burial map that we see and we know uh, that supposedly an 1864 map is really probably a July 1863 depiction of the Gettysburg battlefield. That's just <laughs> stunning to think that you could have a snapshot of the battlefield so soon afterwards. Um, now, we, we've alluded a couple times to the Antietam map, um, and this is kind of the big, um, the Rosetta Stone, as Gary Edelman is, is calling it today, that's uh, sort of unlocking a lot of these secrets and a lot of what's going on at the Antietam battlefield. Tell me a little bit about this, uh, this major discovery. Sure, yeah. So uh, over the course of the research that, that we were doing here on Elliot, you know, I asked my, my colleague, Tim Smith, who's probably Gettysburg's uh, most knowledgeable historian, um, to take a look at uh, the Elliot map and my research and figure out uh, you know, what I might have missed. And it turned out that I had missed something pretty huge. Um, <laughs> Tim searched one of his favorite resources, which is the New York Public Library's digital collection. Uh, it's something I never would have thought of. Um, <laughs> and uh, Tim typed in S.G. Elliot, and the first result that popped up was an Elliot map. Um, but it was not an Elliot map of Gettysburg. It was an original survey of the Antietam battlefield uh, published by Elliot at the same time in the same place. These maps were published in New York and Philadelphia, uh, but there's evidence that the Antietam map was only published in New York. Um, and it really that we know of, there seems to only be one copy of this map, and it is in the collections of the New York Public Library. Now that map, Elliot must have done at the same time, but one really significant thing about this new map is that it labels over 50 individual graves on the battlefield. Um, and there's a count now, I think there's over 5,000 individual uh, tick marks uh, indicating graves on this new map. And like I said, over 50 are identified soldiers, uh, where Elliot actually inscribed the name next to the tick mark. On the Gettysburg map, there's only 18 uh, tick marks where the, the soldiers identified. So the Antietam survey in some ways is, is much more rich in information than the Gettysburg survey. Um, and because this is brand new, Antietam scholars are just now being able to you know, turn over uh, this information and, tr and there's limitless potential for how many stories could be unearthed uh, from this map. Now, I have to admit, you make it sound pretty easy, like, hey, Tim just sat down, he did a quick build Google <laughs> search, and then this new major thing just shows up on the internet, out of, oh, look at that. Um, but a lot of it has to do with the fact that, that the library had this in its collection and didn't know it, 
and has just recently digitized a lot of its resources. And that's why Tim was able to discover it. Am I correct in that? That's correct. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm sure that, you know, we have searched the New York Public Library quite a bit in the past for, for various things, but uh, they received a grant. I think the grant uh, ended in 2018 um, to digitize their historic map collection. And this was one of the maps. Uh, now, why there was no uh, contact at the time when it was digitized with Antietam or uh, the National Park Service or the American Battlefield Trust um, it is a little surprising, I think, but you have to remember that archives of this size, I mean, we at the Adams County Historical Society have over a million items, and perhaps we have something that is exceptionally rare that means something to a certain subset of historians. Um, so I don't fault them at all for, for that, but I think to Civil War people, it's a little surprising that this had been sitting there for so long and that there was no contact made with, with Antietam uh, or Antietam historians. But um, now, you know, there is a wonderful high resolution copy. So I encourage everybody to go to the New York Public Library's digital holdings page and you can just search Antietam or Elliott map and it should come up. You should be able to download a, a wonderful high resolution copy and take a look at this great find. And we'll actually have a copy of that link posted for folks who are looking at the blog today. Um, Andrew, I know you've got a busy, busy day ahead of you. Um, lots going on with the map and, and it's unveiling today. Anything you want to add before we wrap up? Um, I just want to thank the American Battlefield Trust uh, for, for taking this torch. Uh, once we discovered it, we immediately called our good friend Gary Edelman um, and he uh, contacted some media outlets, including yours, and uh, we did a nice video, and uh, their platform has really been been wonderful for us, and, you know, I do encourage folks to, to check out our, our website as well, the Adams County Historical Society in Gettysburg. Uh, we are uh, the community archives for one of the most historic places in the country, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, uh, with over a million historic items and all kinds of research opportunities, so I hope people will check out our website and our Facebook page as well, but I, I do want to really uh, give a big shout out to Gary Edelman and our good friends at the American Battlefield Trust. And I'll include a, a set of links on our blog post to some of the resources that uh, you and the Trust have worked on together. Uh, and I'm going to also include a link to the, uh, the Historic Society. And I got to say, though, the, the piece that you ended up writing about Elliot as a result of all of this that, that sort of triggered this research is a fantastic piece. I really enjoyed looking at it. So I'm going to uh, send people to the direction of that article as well, because I think you just did a really neat story on Elliot and the detective work involved there. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, it's a real pleasure to, to let everybody know about this. <laughs> well, congratulations again on such a cool find. Uh, Andrew Dalton, Executive Director of the Adams County Historical Society in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Chris.